There's black, there's colored, there's white in one place, enjoying because of one thing, it's football. And we're all, all enjoying that. This summer we have the World Cup and all eyes are on Russia and the biggest tournament in world football. But there are other stories around the world about how football is changing people's lives every day and not just for a summer. What I'm looking to do by teaming up with One Football and football charity Common Goal, I'm looking to remove myself from the football world that I know and learn what football means to people around the world and how through football charities their lives are being changed for the better. Welcome to the next location of our journey, Cape Town, South Africa. Now, as we know, South Africa was the host of the 2010 World Cup. A tournament not particularly memorable for England fans, but unforgettable for the most annoying sound in football, the Vuvuzela. There is, however, a darker side to South Africa. And even though the country's been democratic for well over 20 years, there are still a lot of race and social issues that unfortunately play a big part in the way that kids here grow up, and especially those from poorer areas. And that is where the story we're here to tell comes in. There is still so much poverty in South Africa. On the one side of Stellenbosch you get the filthy rich and just on the other side you get the poor of the poorest, you know, where people are living in shacks and um, there's, there's not even enough food on, on, on some of these people's tables at night to feed their kids. Gangsterism, alcohol, drugs, it's, it's, it's happening in front of us and you can't avoid it. We're coming from school, each and every corner has their members there, so it's kind of really difficult for for us in that way. Kids get exposed to it on a daily basis and it's a, it's a huge challenge for them. They see nothing else besides this and sometimes they think that is the right way to go. For it's heartbroken to see um, kids like 11 years old who are um, busy um, starting um, um, joining um, gangs and stuff like that. What I see in the, in the community, what happened with, with smaller kids, some of them they don't have shoes to wear and stuff like that. So like, uh, one of the gangs uh, members come to them and said, I can buy your shoes, but you must do that for me. And that's a big problem in our community because the mother can't afford to buy shoes. Those guys will be become their role models and those are the guys that they think will lead them one day. Education is not important for them because I can get it easier by doing the illegal thing than doing the right thing. So there's an organisation called Training for Changes who are investing in young kids' futures by using football or more specifically futsal to help break down the barriers of segregation and give them a better chance at life. I grew up in a in environment where there was a lot of gangsterism and I had a dream to become one of the top footballers. Uh, in fact, I had a dream to play for Manchester United. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, that didn't happen. But I didn't give up. You know, I knew there was something bigger than just uh, being a great footballer and playing for a top team one day and then I decided to go into coaching. So I then uh, met a friend of mine in 2010. I showed him futsal and he showed me how we can use sports uh, to impact people's lives. The challenge that we have was in the country, we started with development at 18, that you can't develop an 18 year old. We started with six year olds because we believe they're little sponges and we believe they can still, you know, you can still invest in them. If you can install in that language, when he's growing up, he will have different mentality than the older people that we have now, which is our leader sometimes. Yeah. My name is Nakane. My nickname is Raz. I have been to Tifa, to Tifa City for five years. And there's a busy coach. And, and, and then the busy. And this and the and the solo can be a each home. People want to be followers, you know, and they're so little leaders that we are. You don't need to be crippled by the fact that you're living in a shack. But there's a dream that you can have to get out of it. That is what we want to teach you. To try and understand the issues that children here face, I went to watch a T4C training session where I would learn about the reasons why T4C use futsal. Getting to experience the games and methods that they use would show me the degree of how the sport can help in a wider social context was far greater than I'd ever thought. So the reason why we use futsal, it's more intimate. It's a smaller sided game. You only need five players to play. So there's no way, for example, like on a living side field, you can hide. For instance, you are sleeping, the team will concede more goals. So it teaches you 
quick thinking, movement, you need to be quicker, to really keep you active. So when it comes to the situation when you go back into your community, it's always a de also decision making. So if you're confronted by guys that maybe say, listen, but we've got some drugs here, we've got some alcohol, do you want to drink with us? There's not a, a, a lot of time for you to think about it because of the pressure that is put on you. But for you at that moment, you can make a decision to say, listen, but um, I have a voice. I can say, no, I don't want to. And that is what we constantly teach our kids is that you can say no. The futsal is just the medium or the tool that we use to get the kids there. But because they love the game so much, they, they will listen to you. You have these borders, these borders of black, colored and white, which is people are, tend to be comfortable in those borders, you know, only mainly focusing on I am black, I will never go to this place, I will never, because this place they will shoot me. I'm colored, I'm never going to be late to go to this place. I'm white, these people would blame us for the apartheid time. You know, there's a lot of that issues and those create a lot of boundaries. If you can take a child here and took it to, to, to Grutesville, she or he won't get comfortable there because he grew up in a place that the mentality was set like that, that those guys are colored, not human beings. You know, those guys are white, not human beings, you know. We played a game called Mingle Mingle where you just have to like, we say, we sing like a song called Mingle 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 and we say groups of two, groups of three and then you have to form groups. And you know, strangely enough, what happened that day is that the white kids just huddled with the whites and the blacks just huddled with the blacks and the coloreds huddled with the coloreds. And then we changed the game and we said, no, you have to mix with somebody else, with the other race or with the other friend. And when we stopped the game, we said groups of four, literally, literally the black kids stopped and the white kids stopped and they looked at each other and they, they didn't know if they could hug one another. For us it's important that when the kids come to our program is that they realize we, we don't talk about I'm black and you're colored and you're white. When we come here we talk about we're a team. So what we do normally is we have a game to break the barriers of all those things is where we form little squares where you can only play in your own area at that time. The first wall will, will present in community, which, is, which will be speaking mostly about black people, and then the other one will be speaking mostly about the colored areas, and the other one will be speaking mostly about white areas. So you're making different races. So it's kind of difficult for them to receive the ball because they are staying in their own zone, and the ball must move, the ball must move. So you ask them that question, what about the challenges, how, how do they feel and their reactions about that. So how does this relate to everyday life? You being trapped in one section, can you go anywhere? So how does that make you feel? Disappointed. Disappointed. Bad. You feel angry? Because you would like to go there? Because you feel you want to walk anyway, but you can't, am I right? And then the second one is an open game. It's where well, there's no walls, walls are breaking. When the walls are all down, it's where we enjoy, it's where we're free, it's where we're united, it's where we have smiles, and then it's where we're happy. And the, the fascinating thing about that is, the ball that we play with is, is, the, is the center point where everything comes together, where barriers is broken. There's black, there's color, there's white, in one place, enjoying because of one thing, it's football. And we're all, all enjoying that. On our last day in South Africa, we had the chance to go and watch the kids from the TVC Academy team play in a local league match. Having seen them train and been impressed with how good they were for their age, I was looking forward to seeing how they got on. Mark 1 0 to TPC. <laughs> 2 0. Come on. Okay. 
Goodbye. Good work. Good work. One, two, three. Three. Yay. Good work, boys. So we've just finished watching the guys play. They got the win, 7-0, so a huge win for them. And I've got to be honest, I was pretty taken back by the level of football, the standard that they were playing, especially at the age group that they're playing in. They were fearless. They were selfless in front of goal. They were working hard. And it made me think about the sort of environment that these kids are coming from. It requires them to be tough. And what Quinton is doing as their coach is he's nurturing that and he's developing that and making them disciplined on the pitch and off the pitch. So I really wish the best for these guys and I hope they go on to bigger and better things because what T4C are doing for them, amazing. They were six years old when we got them. Now you can see how they've developed with us because we journeyed with them for the past three, four years and the values that we installed and the games that we taught them and the life skills that we taught them, you see it manifest in their lives now. He interacts with, with different cultures and stuff, and you can see in his game as well because he's playing now for each other. It's not only, only him as well, it's, only, it's for, for the team as well, so it's a team player. I like a Hukuba. I don't know if I come down there. I'll see you guys in this part of the Mbakihala. Tifa sit in front of Hukuba. I'm a kid, I'm a kid, I'm a kid. I'm a kid, 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 I'm but what they do for kids is massive, it's, it's, it's really, it's, it's, I feel so grateful for them. We're not changing the world, but we're trying to impact the kids that we work with. And if they can one day impact somebody else's life by what we do with them, that for us will be the ultimate. So we've come to the end of our time here in South Africa. Another amazing story about how football is helping to change people's lives. And what's been particularly great about this one is that I feel like I've actually had the chance to witness the work that TFC are doing and actually see the change. What they're trying to do is make these kids better rounded people, give them a clear understanding of how people can be equal, how they don't need to feel restricted to who they can play football with or who they can hang out with, not to feel constrained that they can't hang out with people from this town or people of this religion or people of this ethnicity. And it's these lessons that are allowing these kids to be able to have higher aspirations, to want more and achieve more and live in a more enjoyable, equal society. And that message is fundamental for kids in this country.